In this video, I'm going to show you how to create and use a Neo4j sandbox for temporary access to Neo4j graphs. A Neo4j sandbox is a Neo4j server instance that runs in the cloud and provides access to a graph. The graph can be one that you have created or one that has been created by Neo4j as an example. Developers, data scientists, and analysts typically use a sandbox to experiment with Neo4j, examine an example graph, or use it as a temporary development environment when you cannot install Neo4j on your own system. You create a sandbox by going to the Neo4j developer page where you click the online sandbox button. First, you must log in with your email address or the user ID you use for Google, GitHub, or Twitter. If you have never downloaded Neo4j or created a sandbox, you will need to enter your credentials to register with Neo4j. Otherwise, you enter your credentials to sign in to the sandbox site. There are many types of sandboxes that you can create. Some of the sandboxes you see here are excellent starting points for learning about Neo4j and its features. They contain graphs with data that you can explore. Sandboxes are constantly being created and updated by Neo4j developers, which is why you may see changes over time and some sandboxes grayed out. For example, the Twitter sandbox is currently grayed out. This particular sandbox is being modified and is currently not available. You can also create a blank sandbox that has no data in the graph. This type of sandbox is useful if you want to load the graph with your own data. A blank sandbox is typically used during training. Notice also that this site contains sandboxes for various releases of Neo4j. If you are looking to use a blank sandbox, you should select a sandbox for a general availability release of Neo4j rather than a beta release. Suppose we are interested in exploring the graph data for the activities of the United States Congress, so we select Launch Sandbox. When we select Launch Sandbox, we must wait a few seconds for the instance to be created. You will also receive an email from Neo4j stating that the sandbox has been created. If the sandbox contains an example graph with data, then you can always get a quick view of the schema of the graph by clicking the Data Model tab. In addition, some sandboxes have sample driver code for accessing the graph. You can see this code by selecting the Code tab and viewing a particular programming language. The Details pane is important and contains information about the ports and credentials for accessing the database server. By default, when you create a sandbox, it expires in three days. You will, however, receive an email notification that the sandbox will be expiring. You can always extend your sandbox for up to 10 days. To access the Neo4j browser, you can either click the Neo4j browser link provided or access it with the direct Neo4j HTTP link where you will need to enter the username of Neo4j and the provided password. Let's open the Neo4j browser for this Legis Graph Sandbox. When you open the Neo4j browser for the sandbox, you will be presented with a browser guide that will guide you through access to the graph. Here we see a message about Browser Sync. Browser Sync can be used to save scripts that you have created for your session. For now, we will simply dismiss this message. This sandbox is for you to play with. You can modify the data in the graph and do whatever you want to with the data. If for some reason you modify the graph in such a way that it is not usable, you can always shut down the sandbox, which deletes the instance. Let's go back to the sandbox site and create a blank sandbox that we want to use for a training class. Here we select Neo4j 3.4, which at this time is the latest general availability release of Neo4j and contains no data in its graph. When the sandbox is created, we now see that we have two sandboxes available to us. Notice also that the Neo4j 3.4 sandbox has no data model because there is no data in the graph. We can now access the graph for this sandbox using the Neo4j browser. When you are done with the sandbox, you can shut it down, which deletes the instance. 
At this time, the sandbox backup functionality is not implemented. So that's a quick tour of how easy it is to create a Neo4j sandbox for temporary cloud access to Neo4j graphs.